Now it's working. Looks like there's a problem right into the, to the disk. Alright, All right, so first thing first, let me double check and make sure the recorder is actually recording. Yep, it's recording from the right channel and it's running just fine now. Still kind of but we'll, we'll keep an eye on that because it does, it's not it's not normal. It's it's kind of doing a lot of hiccup thingy. All right, so this is CISP 300, and I can see that there are a lot of people here, and most of you or many of you are concerned about you know whether you can add to the class or not. I cannot tell you your chances of adding to the class until I see the row sheet when it comes back to me. Um, I can only have 44 students in a class because you know that's almost double the uh, usual enrollment of a class like this. Um, so I cannot handle any more you know, than 44 students in this class. Um, there are 44 students enrolled in the class and then 20 people on the wait list. And I'm sure someone here you know, is trying to add to the class and not even on the wait list. Um, I cannot tell you your chances until I get this back after people put their name, uh, initial next to the name, okay? So just put your initial next to the name. If you're on the wait list, do that too, because I need to see who is here, even if you're on the wait list. Um, I teach the class out of Moodle and not D2L, so the URL is moodle.losreels.edu. Um, just go to that you know, address, and then you can sign in using your W and the seven digit student ID and your district wide password. So it's the same password that you use for email, D2L, and all the other stuff that you do within the district. When you sign, after you sign in, you will see a list of courses. You, top, you probably only have one, but you might have more than one. So CISP 300 is this class. You click that, and you'll be in the class itself. And this is the, 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 the site for this particular class. It's a face-to-face -face class, but I put all my material online. There's no textbook to buy. You know, I write you know, all, my, all of my material. I try to do screen recording, you know, the best I can, um, and I have to keep an eye on the screen recorder just to make sure that it is still, you know, operating. It's operating, but you know, something is worrying me because it's not supposed to be, you know, like you know, doing something and then just you know doing it bursts. Okay, it's supposed to be very smooth. Um, let me see if I can find something here that tells me what is wrong with it. Nope, it doesn't say anything. And I got plenty of space left, so I don't know why it's doing, you know, that kind of uneven, you know, capturing. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and start with the syllabus, and then after the syllabus, we'll talk about, uh, we'll start on the first topics. The syllabus is available online, so after you sign in to your Moodle account, go to the home page. You can find the syllabus in both PDF and HTML. If you want to print it out and put it in your binder, use the PDF version. If you just want to kind of look up things real quick, use the HTML version. And here is the syllabus. First part talks about the class itself. It's algorithm design slash problem solving. Uh, for all practical purposes, this is our prep, uh, preparation class for CISP 360. In other words, this class really does not articulate with any class at a UC or a CSU by itself, but it does help prepare you for CISP 360 so that you have a you know, easier transition into an, an actual programming class. Um, so right here we have the description, you know, which you can get from the catalog. I think starting this semester, you can also just read the student learning outcome or student learning objectives from the schedule or this, I think it's, you can get it from the catalog too. The online catalog actually contains this also. So these are the things that you should be able to do after you complete this course. So we'll keep an eye on all this stuff here, you know, just as a reminder of what you, know, you should get out of this class. 
um, section information, you know, just you know, basically our meeting time. The final exam is going to be the same as scheduled by the exam schedule. Okay. Does anyone, does everybody know where to find exa the exam schedule, the final exam schedule? Okay, you should be able to do it because, you know, we all have to know when and where we will have our final exam. Class policies and rules. There are only three excuses that I have to accept, um, and these are the three. Sickness with verification, jury duty or military duty. Th these are the only three excuses that I have to accept. Everything else is at my discretion. I'm usually fairly, you know, reasonable. You know, if your car breaks down, okay, that's okay. Um, if your cat, you know, got out of the house and it's not supposed to, and you have to spend two hours to find it and get it back into the house, I can understand it. If your kid is sick or if your parent is sick, you have to stay home. You know, I can understand it. Okay, it's only when it becomes a pattern, then you know, it becomes a problem. Okay. Sometimes it's not even because you know people lie to me and say my grandmother died, my grandmother died again. Okay, it's not because of that. Sometimes it's you know like you know um, maybe a family member you know is sick you know and is sick all the time. Um, even though the excuses are, even if I can excuse that student from all those absences, um, it's not good for the student to be missing that many classes. So maybe you know that student can take the class again when the situation is improved. Okay. So a lot of times it's not even you know whether it is excused or not, but you know whether you know someone can keep up with the class with the absences. Now this part is about attendance. Unexcused, uh, a student can have up to six percent of unexcused absences before getting dropped. Six percent in this case is two class meetings. So if someone missed two class meetings without excuses, that person can be dropped from the class. Okay? Are there any questions about the two <coughs> class meetings? If a student is absent because of illness that is either verified by the health center or personal physician, the absence must be excused and the student allowed to make up work missed. So if you are sick, you probably want to go get you know, some form of verification on campus because we do have a health center on campus. Or you can also get you know, some sort of verification from your own uh, personal physician. Are there any questions about you know, um, excuses due to sickness? No questions? All right. Is this year particularly bad with the flu? Because that's what I heard. It's supposed to be. California only got 18 million vaccinations. It's like half the population. Oh, so what happened to the other half? Not enough. Is it a magical 47%? Yes. <laughs> <coughs> Attendance for online classes doesn't apply in this case. This is a face to face class. So, what I will do is I will pass around a row sheet. Um, Probably every class, but sometimes I forget. So, you know, we'll just, I'll just go with that. <coughs> classroom and lab behavior. Um, this is a classroom, and if you kind of turn around, you can see a sign that has a big no on it. So it says big, no food, no drinks, no phones, and no kids. Okay. So for those of you who were here you know, with CISC 310, I'm sorry I have to bore you because I'm going to do the same spiel again with that stuff. Um, cell phones is easy to deal with. Okay, I have an application called Scheduler, no, Silence Scheduler. Okay, Silence Scheduler on Android. Uh, it's a free app. You just install it, and then you can program in on which days at what time you want the phone to be silent. So I just program it to be on Tuesday, Thursday from 9 to noon because I have a class right before this one and the phone you know, will basically turn itself silent you know, only during that time and then after that it will turn the speaker back on, okay, which is the nice part because I won't be missing any phone calls after the class. So that's how I deal with the phone. Uh, food, please don't bring any food into the class unless you have a medical condition that requires you to take you know, food you know, at certain times of the day. Drinks. Um, if it's just plain drinking water, it's fine with me. Okay, 
if it is you know soft drink anything that has sugar or can stain the carpet please you know do not drink during the class you can bring it in and have it covered or you know have the cap on but don't drink it during the class if after the class is okay okay when it fits outside <coughs> Any questions about the no food, drink, phones, and kids policy? No? There are times I wanted to bring my kids here because nobody, I couldn't find anyone else to watch them. <laughs> but I cannot do it because, you know, of the no kids policy. Besides, you know, mine does not behave that well in the classroom, so. <laughs> um, any behavior in the classroom or lab that interferes with teaching or learning is not tolerated. Um, Sometimes I have to stop myself from digressing too much because I can get to that point where it is disruptive. Um, this includes disruption, bullying, excessive chatting, and etc. Uh, chatting, I know sometimes you have a question or people may have a question and say, I just missed what Tax said, okay? Can you tell me what he just said? But instead of asking the student next to you so that the, that student will be missing something else as I'm talking, you can just raise your hand and ask me, you know, could you repeat that again? Okay. Most of the time the answer is, I cannot remember what I just said. <laughs> but that's okay because another student in class can help you. Okay, can probably remind me, Tag, you just said da 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 da. Oh right, right, I just said that. Okay. But in any case, you know, just you know, raise your hand if you want to, me to stop a little bit and kind of talk about what I just talked about. Yep. Or when in doubt, go to YouTube and search some correct yep you can also go to the screen recording and that reminds me to check again make sure it is still going yep where can you uh, excuse me where can you find that recording ah very good question how do I find the recording all right so let me just kind of pause this part here and go to YouTube so what you want to do is you go to YouTube and you want to, let me log out first because if I'm logging in as myself, you won't be able to you know, see what you should be seeing if you're not logged into YouTube. All right, so when you log into YouTube, what you want to do is to look for some props, okay? Which is the old server name you know, of the Moodle server before we moved into the district. But this is what you want to look for is some props, which is my channel name, okay? So once you, find some props, the first link is going to be my channel. So what you want to do in that case is to click some professors to go to my <coughs> channel. And once you get there, you want to click browse videos. The videos are already automatically listed, last one first. In other words, the last video that I upload is the first one that you see here, okay? Which is probably the best ordering because you know this means you know the most recent recording will appear first and I name I title my videos based on the date so 2013-01-19 is you know something that is recorded last week 01 is January and then 19 is the day of month okay and then I follow that with ARC sometimes I forget that but the, the class code will be a part of the name as well so for this class you want to like for today you want to look for 20130122 for today's date and then CISP 300 then you should be able to find it. I would just subscribe to the channel okay because if you subscribe to the channel